My, 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 my. Um, I'm Ed Bacon, uh, the new interim rector of this amazing church, and I am thrilled, excited to be here. And if I have too many more glory attacks today, I'm just going to pop. I love the three magi. It's wonderful to be celebrating amongst them. Um, even though uh, at the 8 o'clock service when I went from here up yonder, I knocked one of them over, uh, no disrespect. Um, when Richard Lee called me with this crazy notion of my coming back to St. Luke's to be interim, interim rector, he said, now I'm working with two other people very closely, and we call ourselves the Three Stooges. I said, to me, you're going to be the three magi. And they have been wisely leading us to this moment, and I'm very, very grateful. Well, I was ordained in this spot on the night of May 19, 1983. I had been hired by Dan Matthews Sr. and been trained by him and Ray Parkins and Peter Gorday and Gene Rule and supervised and guided directly by Palmer Temple. The night um, I was ordained, did we have the, the, the cross come? Yes. The night I was ordained, the artist and blacksmith, Evan Bailey, had offered to let us borrow this beautiful Tree of Life processional cross he had crafted. And that very cross led us in this morning. That led us in that night. And I hadn't seen that cross for 35 years until yesterday and delighted that it is now in St. Luke's possession. That's not the only delight. Um, when Arlen and Caitlin and I were working on the hymns, I'm very picky about which hymns we're gonna sing, we were corresponding about my wanting us to come into We Three Kings of Orient are. But I said, I wanna sing it more as a dance than as a march. And Arlen suggested that we actually have dancing in the procession. And Kristen Hauser, who leads the St. Luke's Ministries for Children and Youth, the very job I had here long ago when Jesus was in the youth group. <laughs> we asked Kristen and she extended herself at a late moment this week, this past week, to have our dancing magi in the procession this morning. I'm just totally delighted about that. And just parenthetically, I love to dance. And dancing is a very important spiritual and theological essential. You'll hear a million times about Thomas Merton, my spiritual and theological North Star. He loved the metaphor of the cosmic dance to describe God's work in history, in the whole creation, and in our intimate personal journeys. He famously wrote, God invites us to cast our awful solemnity to the winds and join in God's mysterious and cosmic dance. Oh, I love that. And uh, all of you remember Emma Goldman. She's often quoted as saying, if I can't dance, I don't want to be a part of your revolution. Now, it's not essential to dance, except metaphorically, because it's such a wonderful symbol of joy. And joy characterizes the Magi's coming to the Nativity and going home with joy. And it is proven in terms of neuroscience, I love to read about brain science, that if you stay playful and joyful, the blood will come up from your reptilian brain through your mammalian brain up to the front prefrontal cortex, which I call your Albert Einstein brain, and you can stay create maximally creative and innovative if your blood flow is up in your prefrontal cortex, and one of the best ways to keep that going is to stay playful and joyful. Now I'm here to lead some joy for about a year or so, so that we can 
Yes. So that we can discern who God is choosing to be our new rector. So uh, it, it behooves us all to stay joyful and metaphorically dancing. Now, before I get to preaching, <laughs> I'm not preaching yet. Um, <laughs> I want to thank uh, the entire St. Luke staff and also the, the executive team, the three magi of the vestry, for this amazing development in my life. Uh, the staff and Scott and Richard Lee and Mignon Crawford, the wardens and the treasurer have been astonishing in responding to the idea that Kathy Lee, bless her heart, she credits it to grace, but her intelligence had something to do with it, had to talk with me about our being interim rector. It was her idea at the first. And this kind of work was nowhere near my conscious radar as a retired person. But all the fruit of the Spirit listed by St. Paul in Galatians 5, a very important thing to read this afternoon, Galatians 5, including peace, joy, love, all those fruits of the Spirit have indicated that God wants this to happen. Now, this has led me, I'm almost ready to preach, this has led me to spend a lot of time reflecting on T.S. Eliot's poem, Little Gidding, where he says that retired people should be explorers. Well, actually, he says old men. And then later, speaking, I think, of all of us, being explorers, no matter our age, Eliot writes, and we shall not cease from exploration and the end of all our exploring will be to arrive where we started and to know it again for the first time. I'm feeling the truth of Eliot's poem powerfully and profoundly this morning. I have returned to where so much started and I have this opportunity to know St. Luke's and all of you who makes, make St. Luke's your home and spiritual headquarters for, again, for the first time. Now, speaking of explorers, we need to speak of these three magi and what they mean for our lives and for one another, with God, with Jesus, with God's spirit and the world and history. I'm only gonna make two points. One is this story talks about inclusion and the other, this story talks about power. St. Matthew tells this story to establish that this Jesus is about including everyone. In this story, the Magi are secular scientists of their day. They're not from the tribal group of Jews in Israel, Palestine. They're from Persia, they're from outside, they are others. They have received a revelation, not, not by studying texts, but by studying heavens and outer space. They have their attention turned to non-religious secular matters. That's the source of their revelations. Matthew's gospel is making a huge point that Jesus is for people of all nations, all backgrounds, and the gospel writer is making the same point here at the beginning of his book and at the end of this book. This is about a gospel for everyone. So, my friends, if you have ever felt marginalized, outside, targeted, This Jesus event is for you. And we here at St. Luke's will guard with all our passion to make sure that everybody who feels outside and marginalized are told that this is for you. You are included and welcomed here. This story is also about power. It contrasts Herod-oriented power or imperial or empire power with divine power. The power of love, represented by the power, the kind of power that babies have. God does not become 
human in the form of a king, a power over someone. God becomes human as a, as a baby who needs help and community, who is humbly dependent and interdependent. God becomes a human, not like a king who, like Herod, gets afraid because his power is threatened and wields power by making other people afraid. God does not become a fear-mongering power. God becomes human, who relates not through fear, but by the attraction of love. There is in every human being the living, pulsing, evolving presence of the divine, the Christ. According to the first chapter of John, when each of us was made, we were made through God's love, and each of us has that divine love alive in each and every one of us. Nothing that was made was made apart from this word and power of love. Every human being, as well as every leaf and lizard, but that's another sermon for another Sunday. But every human being has this energy, this divine energy. You can call it a soul alive inside of us, and that is God inside of us. It is love inside of us. It is goodness inside of us, no matter who we are. When we baptize in the Episcopal Church, we ask, will you seek and serve Christ and all persons loving your neighbor as yourself? I like to emphasize the word seek. We are called to seek this living Christ and all persons because every person has that divinity in them. Now, I understand, I know that in a lot of people that divinity is highly disguised. But that doesn't matter. Our job is to seek the divine Christ in all persons. So that divine light inside every person, that Christ, that soul, is always seeking to unite with the power of love with, not power over. We are always seeking that power to become the organizing center of our chaotic and divided lives. The reason I spend so much time talking about that is because that divine seeking love with not power over was what was operating in the Magi. It was leading them to see that star and to follow it so that they could go and touch embodied love so that it could become the organizing center of all that was in their life. You and I live in a polarized, tribalized, divisive environment, politically, religiously, and culturally. And our job is not to take one side or the other, but to be whole makers people who are so in touch with the love inside ourselves, we know that it is the organizing center of all of our lives. Just think of a mandala with all those different kinds of colors and shapes. And think about love being at the very center of any mandala you see, being the organizing center of that mandala. That's what's supposed to go on in our lives, and that's what was going on. That was what was leading the Magi to follow the star, to come down to embodied love. I just love that about healthy Christianity. And please understand, that this is rubber meets the road love, not lip service love. It is justice for all love, not assistance just for the privileged and elite love. It is unconditional love and grace, not favor conditioned on how moral or religious you are. It is forgiving love that knows that you and I are better than the worst thing we've ever done. It is love that says that absolutely everyone is of equal worth 
and not that white male heterosexuals are intrinsically more valuable than everyone else on the social location map. That kind of love is summoning you and me as one of the magi to come follow the star to this baby in whom God has become flesh with that kind of humble love to become the organizing center of everything that has ever been chaotic or marginalized in your life. If you and I will be magi together, we will become whole and we can become whole makers in this polarized, tribalized environment we live in. Now I'll illustrate and close with this story. When my wife and two children and I came to this place, I was so chaotic inside. I was an ordained Southern Baptist preacher from South Georgia, and I had followed the star, and it had led me to the Episcopal Church, where I found embodied love. And I knew that my narratives had to switch out. I had been told by God that God is love and that everybody is special and everybody is equally beloved. But I had been told by this toxic narrative from outside that God was up there, out there, had an anger management problem. <laughs> and the only way we could calm him, he was always a white him, straight white him, down was for him to kill his own son and for us then to accept that as our savior and that would save us from eternal torture. Well, I found that most people are kinder than that God. That fear-based God religion. And at 10.15 at the Rector's Forum, I'll talk about deconstructing that and reconstructing a new narrative of love. If you're going to be a Magi, please understand that you're going to have some tough times getting to embodied love like these Magi did with Brother Herod, who really wanted to use them to kill the baby. While I was here, I got in touch with being clinically depressed and suicidal. And it was really clear that I needed some help. And so I did some research and found a psychiatrist. And over eight years, went to see him every week, helping me make that transition, following the star to this embodied love. And one of the most important things he taught me was that inside each one of us is an inner divine genius. And we have to learn how to listen to and obey that inner divine genius more than we listen to and obey the Herods in life. Now that's a tough journey, but by the help of God and St. Luke's and then I was rector at St. Mark's in Dalton, Georgia, I came to the narrative of embodied love. And St. Luke's has been on that journey for so long, and St. Luke's has known about embodied love. St. Luke's lives to its outreach for embodied love, and we can do more. So I'm here to joyfully dance with you while we radically and inclusively follow the star by our divine inner true self to the place of embodied love and offer that as whole makers to the world.
My, 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 I'm glad to be here. Amen.